Good, good. Keenan, at, at this stage of your career, what is training camp for you individually? What do you try to use it as a, a runway for the rest of your season? Well, I'm just getting football shape, um, being ready to play a full game. Um, you know, the, the training camp is already set up for you to uh, build that conditioning. And, um, you know, like I said, get ready for a full game and um, just have your body right. I've been on a lot of different teams, some that had really good seasons, some not so much. Is there a feeling that you can feel like they want to cap just how y'all arrive, the energy, the talent, the moving around? Is there something to that? And, and where would you say that is right now here? Yeah, I think um, just starting out in the walkthrough, um, everybody being, uh, you know, kind of polished up, knowing what they have and, um, you know, not having to repeat any plays, um, just being professional about, you know, uh, what's going on. And um, I thought it was solid. Um, I thought that was a great start for us. Um, really, the whole day, I thought it was a great, uh, great start for us. Uh, we looked real solid. Um, like I said, no really, uh, no no repeats, and um, you know everybody was on the same page. Keenan, uh, Coach Flus talked about how it's a balancing act for players needing more reps in preseason versus others not needing. Being a veteran in this league, what do you see? What is the value in preseason for you specifically? Um, I mean, I've, I've been through you know both sides of the story. Uh, I played in the preseason. I've not played in the preseason. Um, I think it goes hand in hand. Uh, being able to get those reps. You know, in the preseason, get get your feels out early. Um, being able to get your feet wet in those games, you know, when the, when the intensity and the pace is you know picked up a little bit, I think it's, it's worthy. So, um, you know, I'm not against it. Is, it. is it more important for you to play in this preseason because you have a rookie quarterback than it would be if you had a quarterback that you already had established chemistry with? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think so. Uh, like I said, being able to play in those conditions where the uh, where the intensity is high, the game speed is uh, like maxed out, um, and um, you know you're not taking practice reps, you know get in there the first game of the season and you're like, oh shit, that's way faster than we than we thought. You know what I'm saying? You want to get those in earlier than you can. You've been on teams before that have dealt with a rookie quarterback. What's the most important thing you can do to help that Um just try to make it easy for them. Um let let make sure we're seeing things eye and eye and um you know try to get to the spots that he likes, whatever spots um you know that he could see versus what I'm seeing. Um and then just being on the same page. Keenan will set his mindset to not to like match where other players are just in terms of learning this offense, knowing like a veteran like you might pick something up quicker than a rookie. What, I guess, is the responsibility of an older player in helping him strike that balance? Um, like I said, just making sure we're on you know the same page, making sure we're seeing the same things, um, you know, reading the coverage the same way, and um, just being able to see it from his perspective, and then you know try to get to the. Try to get to the spots that's um you know favorable for the quarterback. You told us I think it was when you guys were staying in the hotel that you would have like nice replay cards and then go over um the like the early install together. Mm -hmm. What was what was that process like for you as you were getting settled with this? Program? Yeah, it was big. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a guy who you know masters the playbook by any means. You know, sitting at home just looking at the playbook. That's not how I learn it. Um, I'm a trial and error guy. I learn through mistakes and um you know just being able to sit there with him. He call out the play. I draw it up vice versa, you know, while we're sitting there watching the NBA playoffs and um, just being able to go through it with them. We talk about the play, what I like, what I'm used to, what I used to see. Um, and then, you know, just going over the knowledge, making sure, like I said, we're on the same page and um, just being able to communicate at this level. You know, obviously you got new uh, terminology from college and, um, you know, you're going to get different coverages too. So, like I said, just giving him the knowledge that I that I was taught, you know, being with guys like Phillip Rivers, obviously Justin Herbert and, um, you know, just Making sure that we're seeing things the same way. What is, what is your card game of choice? What's your card game of choice? My card game of choice. Um, well, we we were playing Monopoly Deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very friendly. Um, it's kind of like Uno, but in Monopoly ways. But um, fun game. Good good times. Thank you. There's been a lot of skill position players that are seasoned veterans. Yourself, obviously, Cole, DJ. When we get to talk about something on the field, something went wrong, or you're not on the same page, do you feel that Caleb is comfortable enough to approach better a rookie approaching veterans and talking it out and basically stating his case and why he thinks something should have been done a different way? Absolutely, he's the quarterback. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it all runs through him. Um, I can see things how I see him. I can be about it, but you know that's that's not me. Uh, that's not the way I'm. You know, that's not the way I learn the game. That's not the way I play the game. So, um, you know, I cater to the quarterback. I'm, I'm I'm trying to be his best friend, stuff like that. So, you know, as long as I get to the spots that he likes and um, at the at the timing that he likes, then we'll be fine. He said that he said, with all due respect to you and DJ, he came here to be the best receiver on this team. 
you've been through that process, what's it like to try to find that balance between learning from your vets but also establishing yourself like I ain't come here to be nobody's number three receiver? Yeah, um, I think it's, I think it's major. Um, confidence is key. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, I was the same way. I'm trying to come in and take spots, be the number one guy, and um, you know, just try to try to do what I'm, what I, what, what my goals are. You know, um, but you know, sometimes re re realistically, that, that ain't how it goes. Um, you know, I didn't start my first game of the season. Um, I was like number three, number four on the depth chart, and uh, it took some guys, you know, to get hurt for me to be able to be in this position that I'm in now, you know, 12 years in. So, um, you know, the cards probably may not play out like that for him. Um, they might, they might not, um, but we're going to need them, that's for sure. Um, and uh, we're going to need them to make big plays. You, you, talk about, you, you talked about learning the playbook. Where do you feel like you're at as far as being comfortable in this offense and building that chemistry with Caleb? I feel really good now. Um, like I said, going over it with him and then the hotel room, coming back, you know, being able to go go through it with, uh, with the guys um, in, the, in the meeting room. Um, obviously, I've had you know my receiver coach for the past three, four years, and um, you know, and we came over here together. So, you know, we're we're feeling feeling pretty, feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, I believe Caleb's film is littered with him changing his arm angle, sidearm throws. We saw one of those to you today in the two minute drill. I'm just curious from your perspective, like you're going over the middle. Does that keep you on your toes a little bit more when you have a quarterback like that, knowing that some windows that might not normally be open, he might create them and make them open? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to get into a spot where I can see him. And, um, you know, if I can see the arm angle, see the ball come out, then, you know, I'm fine. I don't really care how it gets there. <laughs> Have you seen anything in Rome's game that reminds you of you when you were coming up or something that you're like, oh, okay, that's that's special? Um, I mean, he's a little bit better than me when I came in. Um, he's faster. Uh, I think he comes out his breaks better than I did when I was when I was that young. Um, he looks like like more more polished than I was as a receiver. Um, I was only on year two as a receiver coming into the NFL, so. Dean, what's your impression of Kyler? Then? Kyler Gordon? Oh yeah, he's he's good. Um, nickel. I didn't I didn't realize he played. I don't know if he played nickel against us last year. I'm not sure. But uh, you know, seeing him in practice, you know, those guys play well together, and um, they're all on the same page. They pass things off well. They get into their zones. Their drops well, and um, you know, they're always around the ball. So. Who said that Caleb leveled up a couple times in just his operation, understanding of the offense over the summer? How do you describe how quickly he's picking things up over the past month? I thought it was great. Like like I said today, uh, he was real solid. Uh, he called the plays way better than he was um, in um, OTAs. Um, you know, he felt confident in the plays and knowing what he was doing. And um, you know, there was no um, I don't know no timidness from him. You know, today. So when you guys spent together in the hotel, what do you think the biggest things were accomplished? both from a connection standpoint and then also just in terms of him being able to, to take your wisdom and, and be able to absorb that at a time when obviously it's probably pretty important. I think it's being able to talk ball, um, understanding each other. Um, like I said, going over the plays and, um, you know, just being able to talk to him to, through certain coverages, um, seeing him the way I've seen him in the past and seeing him the way he thinks that he'll see him and, um, you know, just being able to talk ball. Yeah, a lot of a lot of guys have been talking about the expectations for this team, not the outside expectations, but the, the potential of what this team could be and the ambition that the team has. How do you feel about that, given that you're this deep into your career and there's no guarantee how many chances you might still have to play on a team like this? Yeah, um, I'm not real big on it. Um, you know, I've been on teams where the where on paper it looks really good, and then you get into the season, it doesn't play out that well. Injuries. Whatever may happen, um, you know, last game, field goals, the other team going down, scoring drives at the end of the game. You don't really have a lot of control in it um, as far as on paper. So we just got to work day in, day out, stack these days up and get as good as we can get. And, um, you know, when, it's, when it comes to um, game time, we just got to be able to make plays. Did you throw with Caleb this summer? I know the guys yesterday yeah. did it. Where was it? Out in L.A.? Yeah, I was in Did you... I mean, I know that those are sessions that are work for individual work. Was there a time, though, that you could tell him hitting his stride with you two just in building that chemistry? Um, we, only, we only did it twice. Um, so I wouldn't say no. No, I don't feel like not, not like that. Um, it was kind of a, just a routes on air, um, just going through the routes. Like um, he said, just making sure we're on the same page. Uh, you call out a play, you call out a route. We know what you're talking about. Let's get into it. Just, just being more confident, like I said, in what he's saying, what he's seeing, and um, you know what he, what he sees it, how he sees it playing out. Are there any challenges or concerns that you might have in terms of your routine off the field, being 
across the country for the first time, away from your house, away from your family like that is just different from, you know, the 11 camps you've been through? Uh, not really. I'm kind of treating it the same as if I was back home, you know, in L.A., you know, playing for the Chargers. I'm just playing it the same way. Um, it's just another practice, just another training camp day, and um, you know, it's how I'm treating it. Do you have your family here for camp for, yeah. for part of the summer at least? Yeah, they're here. Did you go to Kendrick Lamar's concert when I was like, <laughs> No. <laughs> but I mean, you're an L.A. guy. No, nah, I'm not from L.A., but I, I live in L.A. <laughs> are you saying, are you going to, did you get a place or are you going to stay in a hotel? No, I have a place. Keenan, where would you put you and DJ in, in uh, ranks of the rest of the NFL instead of receivers groups? Uh, duos? Um... I don't even know who else has a duo. <laughs> Give me another duo. If you got Nico Collins, you can go to, uh, gosh, you got me on the spot. Minnesota, Minnesota, San Francisco, I hit the next in Debo. Tyreek and Joe. Tyreek and Waddle's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's me and DJ. Come on now. <laughs> How y'all doing? You all, as a defense, start to come alive toward the end of the season. Heading into camp, what are you looking for? What do you think is missing that can help you all put it together and be consistent for an entire season? Yeah, I don't think I'm necessarily uh, looking for anything missing. We're just trying to get better every day and uh, not necessarily pick up where we left off because it's a new year. We got. We're bringing about a lot of guys back, but we also got some new guys. So we're just bringing the, the new guys that we got along and let, help learning the defense. How much does it help you to spend the entire training camp with the Bears as opposed to last year when you came here the rest of the year? Oh, it's completely different. Um, we're starting from the ground. I mean, from install one. So instead of just coming in with, with a playbook I already learned where everybody around me already know what they're doing, I'm actually learning it with them, going through the process, and actually bringing some knowledge that I have from last year into this year. So. When you report to camp and you've got – team that's got some pretty high expectations, um, you know, having a bunch of veterans, having a little bit of time for that. Does that change the feeling around here? And is it different than maybe here your last stop, you know, across the, you know, a lot of people around the league would think that it might be pretty good this year? I mean, it's definitely excitement there. Uh, that's y'all job to put those expectations and uh, standards upon us, but it's our job to stay t tight as a team and just get better every day and uh, win the day. Exciting for you, though. I mean, I mean, most definitely, yeah. <laughs> Jermaine was saying yesterday that the, the last half of last season, you felt like the defense had a breakthrough in belief that there was a, a, a swelling of confidence. What did you experience in that regard, in terms of seeing the whole group start to understand how good it could be? Yeah, I seen a, when, when I got here, I, I felt the hunger group. I felt the resilient, humble group. Uh, people that wasn't wasn't uh, scared to sacrifice for the man beside him and wanted to play for the man beside him. So, I think that's why we elevated as a, as a group and. Uh, Plan on doing the same. Do you feel, does the responsibility feel different for you this year now that you've been here for a year and you are one of the highest profile, highest paid guys on the team? I mean, yeah, that's natural. Uh, we come, it, it comes with the territory. Um, I take it all wholeheartedly. Uh, it's definitely a bigger role. My sense of being here earlier allow you to maybe be used in a lot of different ways, maybe up and down the D-line, different kind of stunts. And do you even desire to do that kick inside on certain downs or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I love moving uh, across the line, doing stunts with my uh, my inside lineman. And, yeah, it just gives me a chance to get the terminology right. Well, I was just talking to uh, D-Walk today uh, about just what is his what's his signals and stuff like that that he may use on the field and all that type of stuff instead of coming in when the ball's already rolling and we could get some of these things done in the preseason and then hit the ground running when week one comes. Montez, Unique Ngakwe's name came up in the press conference with Ryan Poles yesterday, and I know like you were only on the field with him for a couple games before he got hurt, but what was that experience like from you? What did you notice just about his game and playing up front with him? Yeah, I was I was a fan of Yannick before I, um, before I even got here. So to share a room with him was, was pretty cool. And uh, I mean, just to practice with him and uh, see some of his techniques, the way he approached the game was also a learning a learning tool for me. But it was great playing with Yannick. Um, I think uh, my production and his production went up when we uh, was on the same line. So good luck to him. Montez, there's been a lot of talk about Jervon and how he's reshaped his body. But from an on the field standpoint, how have you seen him grow from when you came in till now? Yeah, he did the conditioning test with the DNs yesterday, <laughs> and I. <laughs> When we was in the um, position, me he had a little beach, he had a little beach. Uh, they put a picture of him in a little beach suit, 
he had the shirt out and all that type of stuff. So yeah, he definitely made a transformation in in, in his body. But I mean, I always expected big things out of Javon. He's just waiting to blow, honestly. Who said that it just looked from our perspective like he might have tipped it, but apparently him just standing there on the during the two minute drills would block that pass. Like, what what did that look like from your perspective? That was Javon. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, I really didn't see it. I just I saw the ball going up in the air, man. I couldn't really get to it, but. Yeah, I mean, shoot, we big, big dudes. Get the hands up, get the ball down. What does that do for a pass rush when you have a, t a three tack that's that big? I mean, it's helpful, uh, especially a guy of Javon, uh, Javon's size and actually a guy that moves with, with the type of ability that he can. It's, it's definitely a tool to have, a nice so, tool to have beside me. Coach Washington came back here with a, a reputation that's being really good with defensive linemen and having a, an ability to kind of teach and mold. What have you experienced from him uh, in your time with him? That, that yeah, he's uh, – He's very hands-on. You could definitely tell that he he likes to be around the D line. He likes to be around the uh, the big guys. So, but yeah, he's very he's very hands-on. He's giving the pointers every every now and again. So, yeah, he's a D coordinator. But at heart, I feel I really feel like he's a D line coach. <laughs> what do you see in your own game at 27 that is more developed or refined than early in your career? I mean, my whole game really all around. Uh, I grow. I feel like I've grown. I've grown every year. Even and I'm still growing. It's certain things in my game that I know I wasn't doing as as a rookie, and it's certain things that I'll be doing this year I wasn't doing last year. So every year that you you grow as a player, experience is a, is a one of, probably one of the best tools that you can have as a as a player. Montez, what do you what do you like most about this defense? Um, I just like the attack mindset. I like uh, you know what I'm saying we rush the pass on the way to stop the run. So it's it's not like uh be like in a box or anything like that. I just, I like the attack aspect. One of the sessions, one of the periods they ended on a play where y'all brought Kyler off the edge probably would have been a sack in the game. Can you tell me what's the the technique and responsibility in terms of y'all working together when they bring that nickel or that safety down off your side? Yeah, it's, it's really, I just want to keep it simple, uh, bring more than they can handle. Yeah, so that's all it is. Is there a tandem for y'all to work together though? Like how do you got to come off to you or how you got to set it up for them? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I could, I could maybe bring the tackle upfield and maybe the, the DB might come up under my, sorry, he might bring the tackle upfield and I can maybe create a natural with him. There's different ways that we could create blisters and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you want to bring more than they can handle. <laughs> Who said the increased competition, not just with position groups, but offense versus defense is something you can feel that's palpable. How do you feel that? How did you feel that this summer uh, in OTAs and minicamp before? Yeah, iron shop is iron. At the end of the day, we all on the same team. We all got to go out week one and beat Tennessee. But, yeah, we all just working together to be the best that we could be on week one. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, even though it's early in camp, it's just the first day, the defense still look riled up, you yeah. know, very aggressive and vocal. How do you think Caleb Williams and the offense responded to that? I don't know, I think, I mean, I feel like it's hard right now because, I mean, there's no pads. It's seven on and beginning the stage of install. So, I mean, it's not too much. I mean, it's not too much to be done, I feel like, at, at right now, especially being in the red zone. It's not like we're – I mean, I feel like for us, it's, it's advantage us right now. And I feel like um, just overall, I feel like they'll just continue to respond, continue to stack days, continue to find ways to fight back. But I feel like, feel like once we start getting pads on, we get to the open field, I feel like then we'll really be able to see who's who. Um, but I feel like right now, day one, it's not it's not really too much to be determined right now as far as the fight back right now. Yeah, but with the, the production that the defense had down the stretch mm -hmm. of last season, what do you think was achieved that can carry forward into to 2024? Achieved as far as what? Yeah, like what did you guys accomplish and, and have in terms of a, a collective breakthrough that, that can help you guys as you get on the runway to this season? I think it's really about energy, momentum. I feel like we had we, we caught fire at the right time. I feel like as a defense and we just continue to stack days, stack weeks, stack games. Um and I feel like just for us we're continuing to do that now through our camp. We did that in spring. So I feel like for us it's really continue on that momentum and I feel like with energy, with confidence, you gotta execute. So I feel like with us it's really we're really big on executing, going out there and dominating who no matter who it is. So I think for us, just can continue on that, staying on that. But we know it starts with execution. It starts with that focus to be able to allow that momentum to carry on. Did anyone impress you coming coming back this year with the conditioning, or just you're getting you're seeing, I don't know, bigger eyes, anything like that? No. Nah, this don't impress me. I got we got to see it on Sunday. I mean, you can take first conditioning in this, so you might not even make the team. 
So, I mean, <laughs> no, nah, I'm not impressed by, by anything right now. I'm just trying to get going with the guys and shoot, start preparing for Sunday. So that's what this is about. Jim, is there a distinctly different feeling coming into camp this year where I think the outside projections for you guys are mm -hmm. better than they've been since you were drafted, probably, in terms of how many games people think you win, you know, the kind of veterans you have and all that sort of stuff? And you said, is there a different feeling? Yeah, does it feel different? For me personally, no. I wouldn't say that it, it feels different. I know I feel like early in my career, I thought we definitely had some good rosters. When I first came here, I can't say what the projections were back then, but I feel like I've been on some talented rosters to where we've had a lot of upside. And I feel like for me, it's one of those things where I'm tired of just having upside and have a potential. Um, I feel like I want to be in a position where we actually go out there and we are that and not just what we're projected to be. I feel like it's about, it's about action at this point. So, I mean, the projections, the – Energy and enthusiasm all feels good in the beginning because I fight everybody, every team, every fan. Oh yeah, this is our year. This is our year. So I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not on on that type of time as far as oh yeah, this is like our year. Like now we gotta go out here and we gotta prove it. And I think that starts with day one, starts with today. But that's something that's going to carry on from now until the end of the season, whenever that is, if that's playoffs or not. Is it exciting though? I mean, I mean, I know you might not buy into it, but mm -hmm. people. I mean, me personally, no. It's not just like, oh yeah, like, I like I like that. Like, no. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. At this point in your career, you've been like, seem like you've been like going out there like taking your respect. Mm -hmm. Now that you've got you know, all pro, you got the contract, all that. No, stuff. it's still more to take. Not for sure, but is it a different perspective where it kind of feel like now the target is on your back? You got I me. Mean, mm -hmm. It clearly you embraced it. You went back to your number one and all that. Right. So it feel like this different thing where it's like at first. You was kind of showing up. I'm sure DC is new and wide receivers new, but this national perspective of like, oh, Jalen Johnson is that dude at corner. Is that a different feeling? Is that a different feeling? No, I mean I've been here, before, like been been in it before. I mean I feel like, of course, in high school you come in as a freshman. Not too many freshmen come in ranked number one, and then I feel like you start working your way up. You go through it, and then you get to being considered one of the top DBs in the country in high school, and then the same thing in college. So I feel like for me, I'm just getting back to where I'm used to being at, and. I feel like for me, it's just finding new goals, new motivation, and continue to stay at the top. Jalen, when you look at the DB unit that you guys have, a lot of time right. uh, in, in that room, do you feel like you are the strength of this team right now, that you're the unit that is most ready to go? I can't say it as far as in comparison to other units. I know just for us, we know what, what we have in our room, and we know that I feel like – it start. I'm not gonna say it starts. I feel like we can definitely carry a team. I feel like based on what your what your secondary can do, because I feel like we impact the game in the run and in the pass, and really just with the energy and confidence. I feel like there's no there's no room that's more confident than our room. There's no room that is going to bring more energy and juice. There's no room that's going to I feel like bring bring a different element to the team than what what we can. I feel like that's going to be something that carries a team that pushes a team to to be really special. And I feel like every Super Bowl team, every team, I feel like they have good secondary. So I feel like for us, we we want to be that legion of boom. We want to be that new, that next era of great secondary that pushed their team to the Super Bowl. Jalen, as somebody that studies the details of quarterbacks mm -hmm. and receivers, is obviously a huge part of your job. What have you noticed that's unique about defending against Caleb Williams? Obviously, only one practice him, but you did practice against him mm -hmm. in spring too. I mean, honestly, it's hard because it's – practice. So, I mean, I study people in the game versus study people in practice. So I feel like being able to, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. It's unique. I know he's definitely talented. I just feel like it's definitely different being in the game, being with somebody who has game-like tendencies versus kind of practice. Because I mean, even in practice, your quarterbacks are a lot more comfortable because it's the first thing that's been talking about in the meeting room is don't touch the quarterback. So, I mean, kind of their, st their steps, their drops going through the progression is a lot more smoother in practice than it is in the game. I feel like in the game, you can really really see some, some, I feel like, flaws of a quarterback in the game versus more so in practice because it's more so protected for them. When you say there's more to take, how do you reset kind of where you are at this point of your career compared to what you were trying, you know, betting on yourself, mm -hmm. trying to achieve what you got up, you know, from last year till now? How do you then, like, focus out on what's next for you? Personally? I mean, I still got a third contract to get. So, I mean, I feel like for me it's just, of course, resetting. But, I mean, even then I feel like, I was second team All Pro. I feel like for me, I could have, I should have been first team. I feel like if you look at the numbers, look at who was first team. I feel like that was definitely something that I could have got. So this year, I definitely want to get first team. So I feel like there's that for me to get. Um, sure, there's winning playoffs. I mean, Super Bowl. I mean, there's still a lot to prove. 
Um, but I mean, shoot, these next two, three years for me is my resume for my third contract. So it don't it don't stop because I got my second contract. Does it feel any different? Because I remember last year when you were going into camp, and I think we brought up the Trayvon Diggs contract. Mm -hmm. We're very honest. Like you're like, I'm not at that point yet. Like right. I'm leaving that conversation. Very clearly, you are now. Right. Like, how different does that feel of just being in an echelon of like? The, you know, the best players playing at your position right now? Honestly, it doesn't feel different because even before I'm at the point that I'm at now, I looked at myself in the mirror every day and seen that. So I think for me, I feel like now just walking in it versus I feel like never really expecting it or not really knowing. I feel like I've always looked at myself as a top DB in the league. I've always looked at myself as an all-pro corner. So I feel like just to get the accolades, it kind of brought into fruition of what I already thought about myself. So, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't feel different because, I mean, I felt this way since I came in. I mean, I've always felt like this. So, I don't think it's anything different as far as feeling. I feel like it's now getting people to see what I've always seen in myself. Since you got here, you kind of progressively stair-stepped into a, a leadership role mm -hmm. with this team. What do you see as your, your strengths in that regard that you can give to this group? <sighs> I feel like for one, about I feel like it's about action. I feel like, like you said, from, from day one, I feel like I've done things the right way. Um, I've even with the old regime, I came in, learned, came in, made plays, came in, and took that role over after Kyle Fuller left my first year, going into my second year, coming in, having the new regime, adjusting, adapting, stepping up, still continuing to make plays at a high level. Um, I feel like now, I feel like for me, it's carrying guys along to do the things that I've that I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to do. And I feel like for me, I got to push myself to be a more vocal leader, to be able to go out of my comfort zone and even push people out of their comfort zone to continue to be better, continue to better themselves, because I know I can't do it on my own. I feel like it takes everybody and it takes me having to be uncomfortable as a leader to be able to push those around me. So what, what do you want to do more as a vocal leader? Like, like what, what does that look like and sound like as you go forward into this season in terms of using your voice to help bring the team along? I think talking, it was funny, I talked to Brisk about this the other day. I feel like just talking to people in groups and not kind of individual. I feel like a lot of times I'll go and like pull a guy aside or like I'll talk to people individually, but it's like I got to talk to the group more. I got to talk to the, the team, the unit, um, more so than just kind of talking to Tariq or more so talking to just Jaquan on like in different settings. I feel like more so the 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 group has to hear hear my voice. Um, so I feel like that's something that I'm looking forward to doing, allowing the group to feel my energy, allowing the group to feel where I'm coming from when when I'm speaking and seeing things that I see, just being more more vocal in a group setting. Uh, this took a big step last year from mm -hmm. week one to week 18. <clears throat> Excuse me. He credited you with a lot of that, just watching mm -hmm. tape from you, talking to you, that kind of stuff. What what do you think is his next step, the next step in his, his own progression, his own development to, to get to the corner that, that he could be? I think it can be – I think it should be the same what mine was after my rookie year, I feel like, because – you come in, I feel like a lot of times you're not really too sure about your own ability. You're not really too sure about what you can do. And then you go through that first year, you go through the ups and downs, you see where you make plays, you see where you get beat at. And I feel like for me, my second year was just going in and dominating. And I think for him, he has to take that next step mentally because I feel like he has it. He has it physically. I think it's just going in and being a dominant player. And I feel like that's something that starts with your mentality and your mindset of going out there every day thinking he's not catching the pass. Like I feel like when you go out there and you have that mentality – then a lot of the times you'll go out there and you'll play a little different. So I think for him it's more so just taking that next step to go out there and dominate and not just be a guy and being okay with guys catching the pass. It's like, nah, that's not, that's not cool. Jalen, you've been a part of all of the team changes that brought a lot of roster changes too. What is the level of continuity that you guys have on defense? What does that mean for you going into the season? I think it's big. Um, just being on the same page, I feel like kind of – it's funny, a lot of guys tease me in the room. I feel like me, for example, me and Kyler have – a good, a good chemistry. And a lot of times we don't have to talk. Like I can kind of look at him and kind of nod my head a certain way, or I can give him, give him a certain sign without making it too obvious, and we can play off receivers. Because I mean, a lot of times when you go out there and you're communicating, the receivers are listening and looking. So I think just an example of that is being close, being tight. You can get advantages, and you can start kind of doing some different things out on the field. But I feel like when you have that between all eleven guys, to where we can communicate, we can look at each other and see this play coming and we can kind of give each other a heads up like hey let's watch out for this let's do this then we're all playing on the same page we're all playing fast we're not really thinking and guessing on what the offense is doing so I think as a whole I feel like it's just about us getting on the same page so we can go out there and play free and make plays because we got playmakers it's just being on the same page you mentioned with Caleb that it's hard to judge how he's how he's doing on practice you want to wait for the game but 
when you go against him, when the pads come on, how are you going to be able to judge if he's making the, the proper progressions that you guys need prior to week one? Progressions as far as? In his development, like leveling. leveling I mean, leveling it's hard for me because I'm not, I'm not no like quarterback guru, so I can't just go, oh, yeah, he's developing great. Like, I mean, that's not, <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not my job. But I feel like more so just kind of seeing just how he is mentally. I thought like that's the biggest thing for rookie quarterbacks, just kind of how, how he bounces back, having a good day, having a bad day, kind of just seeing his demeanor. I feel like things like that is something that you can you can see just in any human being. But I feel like as far as just like his progressions going through the reads, I mean that's not I don't I don't know what the hell he's supposed to be reading. Jalen Montez talked about an iron sharp and iron mentality yeah. that you guys had. And when you look at the wide receiver room that you gotta mm-hmm. go up against DJ and Keenan and Lebron when he gets back, how does that help you guys become better as a defensive unit? I mean, I feel like it's one of those like Alabama, Georgia type things. When you're going against five star people every day in in practice, I feel like when you get to the game, when you're going against, I mean, in theory, you're going against three stars, and I mean, it's a it's a completely different different ball game. That's when you start dominating other teams because you're so used to going against dog after dog after dog in practice. I mean, when you get to the game, that's something like everybody's not a dog. So I think for for us on defense, being able to have those high level guys on offense is definitely going to push us because. We're going to go out there on Sundays, and either we're going to play somebody that's just as good as them or that's not as good as them. And it's going to go – either way, it's going to go in our favor. So I feel like even vice versa for them, I feel like there's definitely some elements of some things that we can give to them. So when they go out there on Sunday, it's, it's a breeze. Jalen, with Caleb, are you more curious to see how he bounces back after a good day or a bad day? Is it one? I'm more curious to see how he back after a good day. I'll probably say a good day just to see how he stacks them. I feel like because for us, that's what it's going to be about. It's going to, I mean, I feel like he, he's in a place to where he, he's confident in himself or he's not going to let a bad day or a bad game or something like affect him too much. I feel like it's more so of how do you continue that momentum? How do you continue to take strides when things are going good? Um, and really just from there, just continue to, to stack the days or stack the weeks. Thank you. Thank you.